So in this video, I'm going to give you four tips of what we do uh, to do a little bit of prep work ahead of time that really helps us to get a jump on it. And I'm also going to let you know at the end of the video what our four most popular pies are too at Christmas. So stay tuned for that. If you're familiar here with Ackett's Pies, you know that we don't use any preservatives, uh, nothing artificial, no hydrogenated oils. So uh, we cannot uh, start baking your pies in the early part of December and just getting them all stacked up on a shelf somewhere waiting for you to come in here at the end of the month. No, no preservatives in our food. And that was something that Dave and I had decided on right when we first uh, started baking pies out of our home. We didn't even know what food preservatives uh, look like or how to purchase them. So we just decided, you know, that wasn't something that um, we would be using in our pies. So we sell probably 30%, maybe 40%, of our pie sales are cream pies. And you can only get cream pies in any of our six pie shops. Um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, uh, we serve about 100 grocery stores here in Michigan. We drive into Chicago four times a week with fresh pies. So the Midwest here carries an Ackett's brand pie in a lot of the grocery stores. However, we don't transport our cream pies. They're very fragile and we don't have refrigerated trucks. If you really want a cream pie, come into one of our six locations here in Metro Detroit. One of the things that we do for our cream pies is uh, bake the crusts ahead of time. If you're a home baker even, or if you're in the bakery business, you can um, blind bake these pie shells about two weeks ahead of time, really. What we do is, uh, we bake them and after they've cooled, we stack them up to save space. Now, that can be a really touchy situation as well. Our pie crust is very tender, very flaky, and it takes a lot of uh, 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 skill and uh, you have to be very careful when handling these pie crusts and stacking them up. You can't just bounce them around and, you know, we're really busy. We want to go fast. We want to be efficient, but there's just certain things that we cannot uh, just slam through, right? Um, if you're a baker, you know what I'm talking about. Our bakers that work in our specialty department, yes, we have a department called our specialty department, uh, and they do the cream pies. They do a lot of other pies that take a little extra TLC. So the lemon meringues, uh, the key lime pies, all of the cream pies. We've got uh, some pies that are uh, multi-step. Um, they're very labor intensive and they do need that little extra TLC. Um, different layers, we've got layers of cheesecake on the bottom of some of our pies. So another thing we do, um, we blind bake the crust. That's, th that's the first thing that we really can get a jump on. Um, we wrap them up really well. We can either put them in the freezer or the refrigerator, or if we're going to be using them within four or five days, we can just leave them out on the shelf. Another thing we do is we toast coconut ahead of time. Now this can be done about two weeks ahead of time. We sell a lot of coconut cream pies and also our German chocolate cream pie calls for coconut as well. So we order a really nice unsulfured all-natural coconut. We spread it out on sheet pans pop it in the oven, 350 for about 20 minutes or so. Now this is labor intensive too, because you just can't really walk away and forget about it. This is going in and out of the oven about two or three times. You're pulling it out, you're mixing it around, you're making sure that all of the coconut gets stirred up and mixed and toasted properly and evenly. I would rather our bakers err on the side of uh, getting a little more golden brown than uh, not toasting it up enough. Um, you know, you really want it to be crispy and crunchy and really um, give that nice uh, extra texture on that, you know, creamy coconut cream pie. We can uh, store it in a container with a lid. It doesn't have to be refrigerated. We're going to be using it within a week or two. Another thing that we do is um, we sell a ton of chocolate cream pies. And on the top of that pie, we use these big, beautiful billows of uh, chocolate curls. 
Uh, this is a real skill. <laughs> it's something that we uh, usually uh, do to <laughs> initiate our, our new hires. Uh, we take a big 10 pound block of uh, semi-sweet chocolate and uh, we take our knife blade out and we pull these chocolate curls, uh, you know, we pull the blade towards us, making these big billowy chocolate curls. Now, it's all about how much pressure you're able to put on your blade as you pull forward. It's also about what temperature this bar of chocolate is at as well. Uh, so our store managers, you know, they're, they're very conservative. They're very cautious with how they spend their money and they look at the profit and loss sheet every month and they're paying attention to their utility bills. So they turn their heat down at night. So in the morning, it might be 55 degrees in that shop and that's probably not a good time to be shaving chocolate when that big bar of chocolate is freezing cold. So it's all about the temperature and the pressure that you're using to make those uh, billowy chocolate curls. Now they're so fragile, what do we, how do we store them before um, our holiday? And we have our aluminum pie tins that, uh, that we wash and we can reuse them to store the chocolate curls in them very carefully, very gently. We don't wanna work really hard to make these big billowy chocolate curls and then pick them up with our hands and, and break them all up anyway. So we're very careful to slide them into a pie tin and everything is weighed. Um, it's very important, right, to have portion control and weigh everything. If you come into our pie shop in Beverly Hills, on, uh, over there in Oakland County on 13 and Southfield, you want to have a chocolate cream pie that's exactly the same that you had when you bought one from our Chesterfield location over in Macomb County. A consistency is very important. So all of our people that are working our stores are very trained. We've got weights and measures on everything. So we're going to store those big chocolate billowy curls in a, a pie tin. We're gonna put that pie tin in a, in a uh, box and we're gonna stack them up on the shelf to uh, save space and uh, just grab them when we're ready for them. Another thing that we do is uh, we make a chocolate peanut butter pie. It's delicious and we, um, we're looking for a, uh, like a peanut butter cup, a chocolate peanut butter cup that we could chop up and use the pieces to decorate the tops of this chocolate peanut butter pie. We put whipped cream on it and then we like to decorate it. We could not find uh, all natural chocolate peanut butter pieces anywhere. Um, everything had preservatives or it had hydrogenated oils or artificial flavors and all of that is off our list. Uh, so in order for us to stay clean and all natural, we had to resort to making this ourselves as well. <laughs> so it's a really nice product that we, we, we should just bag it and, and market it and sell it. But uh, we'll make big slabs on sheet trays. Uh, we'll pour the melted dark chocolate down uh, freeze that and then we put uh, this peanut butter paste that we make from scratch uh, a layer of that on top and then we spread more melted chocolate on top of that and we freeze the whole block and we pull that out of the freezer and chop it up into little pieces as we need it so that's another little item in the topping bar also known as the snack bar to some of our team members <laughs> so uh, yeah that's a little little piece of candy keep you going here during the holidays when you need that extra energy. <laughs> They're just so delicious. It's, uh, it's hard to stop eating them. Those are four things that we can do ahead of time just to get a few things done. Um, like I said, if you're not using preservatives in your food um, and it's impossible to really, um, you know, get too far ahead. You know, people want quick service, people want fast, they want slow food, but they want it fast. So when they come into our line at Thanksgiving uh, or at Christmas or Hanukkah, all through the month of December, um, you know, they don't want to wait in line for 45 minutes while you're, you know, decorating a cream pie for them. You know, uh, we have times for everything, how long it should take to make certain pies. So our most popular holiday pies, well, at Thanksgiving, I, I worked in the back of one, or, one of our stores. I don't like to get out front too much, but when I did, um, and I had the opportunity to talk to some of our guests, 
uh, people were asking me, where is the French pecan pie? It's the holidays. I've got people coming over. I want that pie. Well, I said, hold on. It's not on the menu for Thanksgiving, but it will be on the menu for December and January. So as I talked about the French pecan in another video, um, it's very popular and it was a pie that we only started making a few years ago. We had this lady come in, oh my goodness, and she asked us to make this pie. And she described it as a layer of pecan pie on the bottom of the shell, uh, just a thin layer of pecan pie. And you bake it and then you have to cool it. And then you put a layer of French silk over top of that, top it with whipped cream, we drizzle it with chocolate, we put our candied pecans on top of that. And so it's a really nice pie, but this lady kept asking us to make it. And we were like, oh, it's, it's two of our most sweetest pies that we make, right? French silk and pecan are very high on the bricks. And we we're like, oh, you know, and she's like, she kept coming in and asking us to make this pie. She was begging. So whoever you are, I don't know who you are, lady, but thank you so much for continuing to put pressure on us to make this pie for you. It ended up being one of our top sellers during the holidays. It's a very good pie. It's very rich. So you can maybe cut it into, you know, eight or nine slices. You can serve a lot of people because it is so rich. But you know, a lesson learned. Um, listen to your customers. They're usually right. <laughs> they, can, they can give you some really great ideas. So thank you, whoever you are. Another really popular pie is another very labor-intensive pie. It's called Pumpkin Shelly. And one of our bakers, Shelly Morton, uh, was with us many, many, many years ago when we first started. Well, not that many years ago, but you know, we've been in business for 25 years, so it was in the early days. And Shelly came in and um, it created this pumpkin pie for us, and it has a layer of cheesecake baked in the bottom, pumpkin pie filling on top of that, and pecan praline sprinkled on top of that, and then we bake it. It is out of this world. It's really, a really a nice pie. It slices up beautifully too. So it's a pie that you wanna to present to your guests at the holidays. Thank you so much, Shelly, for that. We, we appreciated your creativity and your baking skills. You're one of the best. So thanks for bringing that aboard. We still, of course, have uh, kept the name Pumpkin Shelly all these years, and we give Shelly all the credit for that wonderful pie. So another pie that's really super popular during the holidays is our chocolate peanut butter pie. So it's our homemade pastry cream with uh, chocolate mixed in on one layer, and we mix peanut butter in another layer of the pastry cream and top it with whipped cream. Again, we chop up those homemade chocolate peanut butter pieces that I told you about earlier, sprinkle those on top, glue it all down with some drizzled chocolate on top of that. It's really nice. And of course, our most popular pie that outsells any other pie, you know, over and above, head and shoulders above all the rest, is our signature pie, the Michigan Fourberry. Uh, that's in our homemade pastry crust with uh, cherries, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. It's not overly sweet. Um, and then we sprinkle it with our buttercrumb topping. It's really out of this world. Um, the cherries really seem to cut the thickness of all of the berries that are in there. So it's just a really nice, clean tasting pie. Uh, nice finish on that with the crumb topping. We also do it with a plain pastry crust on top as well. And I believe we make that one in a smaller uh, version uh, with uh, no sugar added. So we do Michigan Fourberry and an apple pie. I believe there are two fruit juice sweetened choices that we have available for the holidays as well. So for those who are watching their sugar, it still has a lot of sugar in it because it's fruit, but still less sugar than, than a regular pie. So I hope that everyone comes back and joins us again here in the month of December, picking up your gift cards and your holiday party pies and your corporate gifts. We just enjoy the holidays so much. We're so thankful for all of our customers that come in and support. We're thankful that you have chose Ackett's Pie to be part of your holiday table and your holiday celebrations. 
So thanks so much, you guys, and um, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to give me a thumbs up, share it with a friend and all that. And I wish you the best of all the holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.